Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be making a compound called hexaamine nickel 2 chloride, perhaps the longest named chemical I've ever made. And it's actually very simple to make. It's a complex between nickel chloride and ammonia. So all we need here is what I have as a solution of nickel chloride, a uh, concentrated solution of it, nice emerald green. And we're going to combine that with concentrated ammonia solution that I've also made and acetone, which I distilled in my previous uh, over-the-counter purification video. Okay, I've transferred two milliliters of the solution into a test tube and now I'm going to add the concentrated ammonia. So as you can see there's a nice emerald green color uh, and when we add the ammonia we'll, we should see a series of pretty beautiful color changes. So I'll add this one milliliter at a time. Oh and by the way uh, all of these reagents, the, the um, acetone, the ammonia, and the nickel chloride were all chilled in my, my lab uh, fridge before this just to bring them down to a cool temperature. That's because this step right now uh, produces quite a bit of heat. So we'll add the ammonia. Just one milliliter of it. You can see we get a really cool uh, layering effect and I'll just swirl that around to mix everything. It's a bit darker green, so I'll add another milliliter. And you can see we're starting to get this really beautiful color change from that deep emerald to a really deep royal blue. Let's do a third milliliter. And why not? We'll do a fourth as well. Now you can really see the very deep blue coloration. This is from the ammonia complexing with the nickel chloride. So nickel chloride um, in solution has actually got six water molecules attached to it. So what we're doing in this reaction is replacing, we're displacing the water molecules with uh, ammonia molecules. So it turns into, it goes from um, nickel chloride uh, hexahydrate to the reagent that I wanted which is the hexaamine nickel 2 chloride uh, and that's really apparent in the equation which I'll, I'll put in the description. So now we've got this really beautiful blue color of the um, hexaamine complex in solution and now what we want to do is take it out of solution. So that's where the acetone comes in. We're going to add the acetone and what that's going to do is reduce the polar nature of the solution. So acetone is much less polar than uh, water is. So once we add that, it should push the complex out of solution and we'll get yet another nice color change. So here we go. see as the acetone is added we get a precipitate and just by feeling this yeah it's a little warm it's a good thing I cooled it down so we'll swirl this around to mix everything and we get a beautifully colored precipitate which looks to be white but that's just because the rest of the solution is so such a dark blue so if we keep adding acetone what's going to happen is it's going to push all of this complex out of solution and we should end up with a nearly colorless solution and a nice lavender precipitate. Now you can start to see the, uh, the purpley color of it. So I'll keep adding a good amount of acetone, quite a bit more than the solution I started with to again push everything out of solution. This is another reason by the way that I chilled everything beforehand um, to further reduce the solubility of this compound and get as much as possible out of solution. So now you can really see the purple color. So I'll keep on adding acetone uh, and then give it a minute to let it settle. 
So we're most of the way through the addition now, and you can see there's a, quite a difference between the, uh, the color of the solution from when it started. It's a much paler blue, and the precipitate is very definitely a lavender color. Uh, it's very compact, too. You see it settles quite quickly, uh, which is nice. So now you can see when I add more acetone, uh, it should drive more of this precipitate out of solution. See now there's almost three distinct layers. So we'll give it a stir. So after adding a whole bunch of acetone, I had to move to a larger test tube. Uh, and I wanted to show you how cool this is to watch it, it settle. Because like I said, it's such a heavy precipitate. Um, so this is just after mixing it again. And now if I leave it alone for a minute, uh, it'll settle out. And it's really beautiful to watch. And this is in real time, by the way. Here's another view that's sped up four times and under different lighting conditions. So here's my product after putting it back in the fridge for a couple of hours and letting it settle a bit. You can see nearly all of the color is gone from the solution and we're left with a pretty nice heavy purple precipitate at the bottom. Uh, I think the remaining cloudiness in the solution is just from really tiny particles of the, uh, the hexaamine uh, nickel 2 chloride uh, that are just suspended and that, that would take a good while for that to settle out but uh, I don't think I'm going to wait for that. So the, uh, what's on the left I had to graduate to a larger uh, test tube because I had to use a whole lot of acetone to get everything fully precipitated. Uh, so the one on the left was what's been from the rest of the video, and the one on the right was just a one milliliter of solution that I used um, as a test earlier. Interestingly, I also tested ethanol as a precipitant, and this is the result of that. You can see it didn't do anything at all. Uh, I had heard that ethanol could also be used in, in place of acetone because it's also less polar than water. But probably what happened with mine is I have, I was using Everclear, the 75.5% um, ethanol version of Ever, Everclear. Uh, and I guess that's just got too much water in it. So it could never um, reduce the polarity enough to, to get the precipitate. So anyways, you can see that uh, it's, it stayed that nice blue color. And this is kind of a nice comparison between what the blue used to be, what the solution used to look like uh, as to what it is now after the addition of acetone. So now the last thing I'm going to do is just take this and filter it off and collect the, the solid product. And I'm going to filter this outside, I think, just because the majority of this is acetone, so it's going to smell pretty awful. Um, and when I'm filtering it, I'll be washing it with a few more um, amounts of, of acetone just to rinse off any of the liquid. Uh, I don't want to wash it with water, of course, because then that it would uh, re-dissolve in the solution, and that, that's not what I want. So here's my final product of solid hexaamine nickel 2 chloride. I ended up with about 0.6 grams of it from uh, the total of 3 milliliters of the nickel chloride solution that I used. So I've, I've got quite a bit of solution left, but it's going to take me a while to process the rest of it. Um, I'll probably end up having to distill some more acetone to finish it just because I had to use so much for this one. Um, so once I finish off the rest of this, I'll, I'll let you know how much I got and what my yield was. Uh, but you can see it's just this really beautiful lavender color. Uh, and I've also, I've sealed it in a glass ampule for storage um, because what I noticed 
was uh, I left some out to dry and uh, it looks like it's at least mildly air sensitive. So you can see that the uh, residue on the filter paper here is completely discolored. It's all uh, green now. So compare that to the purple that it was. Um, so I guess on exposure to air or maybe even something uh, just in my lab here, uh, it reacted with it and discolored it. So I'm going to store it in this ampule just to make sure that it's protected from the air. Uh, so you may be wondering why I wanted to do this synthesis. What's the purpose of hexaamine nickel-2 chloride? What's the use of it? Um, there really was no purpose, to be honest. <laughs> uh, it just sounded like a really cool synthesis that I wanted to try. Um, there's really not a lot of purple compounds out there, and especially not of nickel. Generally, uh, nearly all nickel salts are uh, some kind of shade of green, so it's pretty rare to find a, a purple one like this. Uh, and it was, it's a fairly simple synthesis that I could do easily and come out with a neat product. So, hope you enjoyed. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing this one. Thanks for watching.